With the mouth call, the basic thing you're trying to do is just make a noise. And by pushing your tongue up in the latex and producing airflow over it, you're going to get a high note. You drop your tongue a little bit in your jaw and you get a low note. On a clear call, it's going to sound something like this. Notice how I'm getting the highs and lows out of that call. On a mouth call, or any call, the yelp is kind of the backbone of turkey language. So we're going to start off with the yelp. Remember, we're going to produce that high-low. We're going to use a little bit of our jaw and our tongue to produce those high and low and get that yelp out of there. It's usually a plain yelp is usually three to five, six notes. It can be at any amount of notes, but that's kind of the basics of it. Notice there's a little pleading quality there. You're wanting to portray that hen that's kind of looking for another turkey, and I put that pleading quality in there. But that's your basic of your yelp. Cutting is a call that you definitely want to learn on a mouth call. It's a call that'll make a turkey gobble. It's a call that excites turkeys. It will make hens aggravated at you and come to you. It's something you definitely need to learn. It is basically clucking with a little sharper tone to it and put in a broken rhythm pattern. Very excited call, a call that you definitely are going to want to use to fire up that old gobbler. To cluck, I like to use the word puck, which makes my lips pierce, and then the U-C-K, or, or the U-C, or whatever you want to put on the end of it, gets that, that crack at the end of the cluck. So if you say the word puck, it automatically produces that note inside your mouth along with the call. This, this particular call is usually a searching call or a, or a call to let another turkey know that there's a turkey around. It's a great call to learn. Single note clucks have been the mini demise of a big gobbler. Cackling on a mouth call is real similar to cutting. Again, the rhythm pattern's a little different. The pitch and tone of the call is primarily the same, but you'll note that on a cackle, there's an explosion as that hen turkey's trying to fly off that limb. I call it a controlled crash because she really doesn't want to fly down, but she knows she has to fly down, so she kind of gears herself up and then she pitches out of the tree. Note that there is a little build in that call where she's getting excited and finally pitching out of that tree. It's a great call to use, especially when you have gobblers roosted with hens and you're trying to be the first hen on the ground. We'll talk a little bit about purring, the cluck and purr put together. Purring is a contentment type call, although it can be an aggravated call when you get two turkeys that are getting in, into each other's territory, it's typically a contentment type call, something you want to do soft. I call it the finishing call. A lot of times when you do a little clucking and purring, it finishes that turkey out, makes them want to go ahead and come that extra few yards for the all-important shot. I'm basically learning to gargle as I'm learning to purr. So if you're gargling, it's more of a without any noise. And you close your mouth, you get that hollow tone. This will take a lot of practice, but is a deadly call once learned.
Notice I'm mixing it in with some light little clucks and little feeding sounds. Deadly call. Another call you can do on a mouth call is a fighting purr. Now, hens fight and gobblers fight. It's a call I use a lot trying to create a, the ultimate in excitement where two turkeys have gotten together, they start fighting. A lot of times this is a call that I use to break those gobblers off the hens or to bring the whole flock to me when they're really bunched up in that breeding mode in the springtime. All I'm doing is I'm putting a little more emphasis on the purr itself, getting it louder, a little bit more guttural, and I'm trying to do two different tones like two different turkeys fighting. You notice you'll see my mouth using those manipulations to get the highs and lows out of those purrs to sound like two different turkeys. It's a deadly call and one that you should learn. You can even do it on a friction call. Last but not least, we'll talk about the kiki. Kiki is primarily a fall call, however, it can be used in the springtime. Especially those western birds, some of those turkeys out west, the Merriam's turkey and the Rio Grande turkey, oftentimes you'll hear the hen's kiki. You'll hear it a little bit in the spring on these eastern birds, but it's a call you want to keep in your arsenal because it can be mixed in with your other calls. Again, it's creating that illusion of multiple turkeys. All I'm doing is I'm getting that high note that we showed on the very front of trying to get that first yelp. Once I obtain that high note, I say the word P, like P-E-E, -E, to get the key, and then I put that in the proper turkey rhythm. I may mix it in with a few yelps, but it's definitely a call that you want to have in your arsenal. You can do this on a friction call, but having that mouth call with you gives you the hands-free option and gets you on that gun ready for when that all-important shot takes place. What I'm going to do last here is just go through the gamut on mouth calls from tree calls, fly-down cackle, key keys, cutting, everything that you can actually do on a, on a mouth call kind of in a series here so you can kind of hear all the versatility that a mouth call has. There's no question that a mouth call is the most versatile call you can have in your arsenal and definitely one that you're going to want to learn to use so that you can have that gun up and ready when that gobbler gets in range. Calls, you're sure to be successful this spring.